What's been the biggest mistakes you've brought to relationships? That Me personally? That you've later had to realize and take accountability for, oh, okay, yeah, I was responsible for this or this, or I could have shown up differently. Yeah, um, for me, it definitely has been, in the past, codependency. And what I what that looks like is, it's funny, you know, relationships are funny. I mean, I've had some really beautiful relationships, and I've had some not-so-beautiful relationships. And that's why certain people are going to bring out certain things in you, whereas others are not. But I've definitely brought codependency and low self-worth to relationships, like... Um, depending on my partner too much for my happiness. Really? Yeah. What happens when we depend on our partner to make us happy? Um, catastrophe. So here's, here's the paradox. I think that we need to be with someone who wants to make us happier and that we want to make, we want to add value to each other's lives. We want to make the path easier, but no one can walk our path but ourselves. And so what happens is that when, and it's unconscious, you know, and it's part of it is also conditioning. It's like be with someone who makes you happy, this or that, you know. The problem is that if you don't feel at least mostly whole, you know, we all have our things that we're dealing with. But if you don't, if you feel really fragmented and you think a relationship or another person is going to actually bring all the pieces together, then what's going to happen is that you're going to be really disappointed because then you're relying on another fallible flawed human imperfect human imperfect human and you're going to have all these expectations and your your shoulders are going to be crushed by the weight of failed expectations mm. constantly um but you know so yeah i've done that yeah um not really standing on my own two feet emotionally um i have brought stress to a relationship and not and not my self-awareness around stress to the point where I've closed or yeah where I've closed you know not been receptive to love guarded and, yeah guarded or just tense and stressed and just totally um, expecting to be loved anyway and it's it's you know relationship is so filled with paradox it's like Yes, they should actually contribute to your happiness. But you also have to know how to make yourself happy. No, you don't have to love yourself completely for, to be in a relationship. But yes, you have to love yourself at some level, you know? Or you learn to love yourself in a relationship, but also you can't enter a relationship hating yourself. There's just so many paradoxes, and I would just say that people just need to find sort of the balance for themselves. And like the reality is that we should be adding value to each other's lives. Mm -hmm. We should want to root for our partner, and we want to see them win, and we want to see like their path be just like paved with gold. Mm. And we will do anything to help them, but we can't actually pave the path path for them, and right. that's the key difference. And we can't expect that from someone. Right. I think that's, you're speaking my language right now because, you know, over the last couple of years of doing my own healing journey, I was just like, if I enter a relationship again, right? It was kind of like if, you know, because I was just like, I'd rather be happy and on my own. No, but I love intimacy and connection. So yeah. it's like, okay, I want it, but it's like not at the expense of like suffering. Yes. And abandoning my my values and my vision and yes. my lifestyle, my needs. Yes. But I was like, I just want to make sure that I'm always taking care of it and loving myself and taking care of myself yes. and creating my own joy and happiness and fulfillment, independent of a relationship. Never needing someone, but the way they show up can just add to that joy, yes. add to that happiness. And I want to be in a relationship with someone that is a joyful person. It's kind of like their baseline. Yes. Because they've processed stuff. They've been on the healing journey. They're they're whole, not perfect, but yes. whole and and continuing to improve. But they're just their baseline is joy. Yeah. When someone's baseline is joy, you don't have to do something to make them joyful. They are joyful. Yes. And so it's getting your place to a, a state of peace and joy and fulfillment in your own life so that you don't need the person to make you happy. Yeah, absolutely. And then you're not going to self-abandon, I think, or diminish your self-worth in the relationship if someone's 
abusive or acting out of character consistently, you're not going to stay in that. You're going to be like, well, that doesn't work for me. And that's really the key point because mm. honestly, what's epidemic in terms of what I see personally is just low self-esteem. And people, it's sort of like two camps. I see people either being selfish and not appreciating their partner. And not right? giving enough to their partner. Not yeah. giving enough. Uh -huh. Or I see the people tolerating too much BS. Right. And so to the people who tolerate too much, it's like you, something, you have to do something to raise your self-esteem. Something. Because the, what people tolerate out there is what I've tolerated. Crazy, crazy, right? it's, it's unbelievable, actually. But part of that is also because people are so afraid to be alone. And they're afraid to start over. And the they, time invested with that last person. Exactly. Yeah. Love your life single. You can really love your life single, but also really want a relationship. I don't want to discourage. I think that life is better in a good relationship. Uh -huh. It just 100%. is. And, and getting love from a partner and, and sharing and having that exchange is, is really profound. But, it, but, you know, you also have to give up your preferences to be in a relationship. Right. You know, like... I tell single people all the time, like, you want to lie in your bed diagonally, like, go for it. You, like, you, all that secret single behavior, enjoy it. Because when you're in a relationship mm -hmm. and you're living with someone, you can't necessarily do that. But you have to really, like you said, being in the position where you'd rather be single than just in something subpar, that is an amazing position to mm -hmm. be in. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Are you in a relationship right now? I'm actually not, which is wild. Um, I mean, I guess it's not that wild. I, you know, so the whole reason why I do this is that I taught yoga for 20 years. And so yoga is like the, probably the most important thing in my life other than people in my life. And I had a really difficult marriage that only lasted two years. It was like actually... How long were you together for before? Four years. Well, we before. were together two years prior to that. And interesting, this is an interesting story. So I would say 90% was perfect before we got married. But the 10% that wasn't was so, so profound. And yeah, I felt seen, safe, loved, adored. I adored him. We, we had amazing rapport. We laughed hysterically. Really? I really like it when I make people laugh. If you can understand, I have a really dark nasty sense of humor so if you can understand my sense of humor i immediately feel very connected to you sure. right and so we really connected and but there were things that um that i would never tolerate and this is something like we're cool like i he, things not working out with him and then my mother died so mm. i went through a lot of tragedy to get to the place where i am now but I'm very cool with him. In fact, I have a joke that I should probably, that he should probably send me a bill because I have this whole career based on this relationship that I had with him. The so wisdom I, you gained from this Oh, experience. so I'm actually yeah. very grateful. But there is an interesting story, which is that we went to, um, we were about eight months into our relationship and I felt totally in love. We were both totally in love. And I don't know what triggered this because this was a while ago and I, I, just don't, I just don't think about it anymore. It's, just, it's not traumatic for me. Um, but something triggered him and he had a proclivity towards avoidance and I had the proclivity towards anxiety. And mm. my father was very, very avoidant and shut down. So here yeah, we are. Ancient and avoidant yeah, is not a good it's combination. Not, it's not a good combination. combination. So it's a bad combination. But so... He was shut down over something that I have absolutely, something that was not warranted. Mm -hmm. And we went to this show called- It was his own traumas. Yeah, his, 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 yeah. Totally his own stuff. This was not something that, I mean, I can take a lot of responsibility and have, but this is not something sure. that I did. It was something that he interpreted. Mm -hmm. So we went to this show called Sleep No More. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard of it, but yeah, it was yeah. like a thing in New York and it yeah, was crazy. really, really crazy and really cool. And you get there and yeah. they give you like these masks like from Scream, basically, mm -hmm. like these crazy masks. And so you become, even though if you go with someone, it's a very, you kind of get separate. separate they separate they you. They take you into rooms. And yeah. It's whole... So it's a very solitary experience and everyone's behind a mask. So you're having your own experience. But on our way there, I could, he was in what would be the first of many of like these moods where he would shut down and I didn't know what was going on. Back then, 
I didn't have the courage to say, what is going on? Like, speak up. Like, what's happened? Did I do yeah, something? Right. Let's talk about it. Let's this. talk about it. Now, <laughs> it wouldn't even, yeah. You didn't and, have the tools then. Yeah, I didn't yeah. have the tools and, and I didn't have the self-esteem then. The courage. The, yeah, the, the speak all up. of it. And so when we went, he was totally shut down. We were separated. But there were times where you would recognize the person because you know what they're wearing. And I would be so psyched to connect with him and he would pretend like he didn't see me. It was like a total stonewalling. And I was so incredibly upset. And all I could think about is I got to get this relationship back on track. Like I have to like make this better. From that one day. From that, from from that, that one night because wow. he was stone. I knew that I was like, his feelings changed about me. I have to make sure that I, mm. that whatever it is that triggered him doesn't trigger him again. So all this stuff came up. So you interpreted that too. Yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. So I, so I got really anxious, you know, I low self-esteem. It's not perfect. Actually. I don't want to, or like, it's not that it wasn't perfect. It was really bad. Right. If, so in other words, if the, I were to encounter that today, that relationship would have ended that day. You were like, hey, this doesn't work for me, yeah. It mm -hmm. just would have ended, because I would have known from a value system perspective and also from what is good for me that that is absolutely, we can, we can have fights, we can have disagreements, but that is not allowed in my world. So, um, so I've changed a lot, and the relationships that I've had since then, because we split many years ago, have been super healthy and super, super lovely, mm. just not, in alignment with what it is I really want. Yeah. And I am just like you, like I would rather, uh, yes, companionship is great and having someone tell you you're beautiful and lovely and friendship and is great. And, yeah. yeah, but what I want is something like, I'm looking more to the future now in a way that I haven't in the past. So I ended something fairly recently that was lovely, that it was not painful. It was super, super healthy. And I guess I'm sharing, part of the reason why I'm sharing this story is that some relation, it, just because a relationship ends, it doesn't have to be a drama. It can be mm. lovely. There's no pathology to a relationship ending. When people are stressed out, it's like they're shut down for business when it comes to their partner. Because we, if you haven't experienced, I don't know if you have, when you're really stressed, we become obsessed with ourselves. We become obsessed with the problem. We become obsessed with, not knowing where there's a way out. And look, sometimes stress is